think uh, this, I do not have allergies. I'm in denial. Preacher is in denial. He does not have allergies. Claim it. Give me 30 seconds. I'll be right back. 30 seconds. Starting now. The clock is running. We get a big clock and put it on the wall. Let it run down. Slim. All right, let's all grab a songbook. It is hard to believe it is December, so we're going to stand, turn to 304. Let's sing Away in a Manger. We'll do the first and third, 304. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. Go on to the second. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky. And stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. On the third, be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there amen you may be seated thank you michelle lewis for filling in on the piano and i don't know maybe we have another individual with a 20-year tender getting ready to start and uh We'll, we'll pray about that, and it's good to have you here on this Wednesday. I know there's been several that's out sick, and uh, then there's some that's had surgeries today, and uh, then the rest of them, if they're out shopping, we're going to pray for them. I'm going to pray when they get up to the checkout and they run that card that it freezes, and uh, no, I'm not going to pray anything like that, but hopefully that's not where they're at tonight. I know there's a lot of uh, sickness. Of course, there's some next door, our youth next door, and then our, our young patch children in our other building, our fellowship hall. And then the vans are slowly coming in. So praise the Lord for those that are out on this Wednesday evening. Does anybody need a prayer card to fill out a prayer request or does somebody need a yellow sheet? If you do, wave your hand, wave it around, and Gordon will make sure that you get one. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to bless our time. And I just came from the hospital. Miss Lori's surgery went well. She's out, recovery, and uh, she's on her way home. So let's, uh, let's continue to pray for her as she heals. Let's uh, go to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for an opportunity that we have and bear one another's burdens in prayer. Not only that, but a time where we can look into your uh, timeless word 
and uh, Lord, draw from it the truths in which we could lay the foundation of our life upon. I thank you, Lord, for those that serve. Thank you for Michelle filling in tonight. And uh, Lord, I thank you for uh, Brother Kevin and Miss Lisa as they work with our teens, Brad and Jennifer as they work with our young people, Miss Deborah as she works with our Pee Wee uh, Patch children, and uh, Lord, those that drive the vans, pray that you bless them tonight, the sound, those in the nursery, and uh, Lord, we just pray your hand of blessing upon our services tonight, and uh, we give you all the honor and glory for all that's going to take place. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I ask that you would uh, pray for Jared and David. David's been home sick today, and then Jared's had something going on for about three weeks now where he has just felt really bad most of that time off and on. So just remember him, and that's that's where Tina's at tonight. So I do appreciate Michelle filling in. Let's stand together again. We'll turn to 168. Let's do the first and third mansion over the hilltop. 168. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one that silver line i've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old and someday yonder we will never more wander but walk the streets that are purest gold on the third don't think me poor or deserted or lonely i'm not discouraged i'm heaven bound i'm just a pilgrim in search of a city i want a mansion a harp and a crown i've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old and someday yonder we will never more wander but walk the streets that are purest gold amen may be seated you know we get to that part where it says we'll never grow old i thought about singing it one more time and letting you put like and then put somebody's name in there. And, uh, but I thought I'd probably get in trouble if I started that. And, uh, I don't know if you've ever been in a place where, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's over now. And, uh, honeymoon's over. We've already been here a year. And, uh, no, praise the Lord. We love Eastside Baptist Church. And, uh, when it gets to that part, we'll never wander. I don't know if you've ever been someplace where you just, you're lost and you wander around. It is not a good feeling. And uh, there's been a few times that I have been wandering around and I've been, sometimes I, it's been in my own house. It's bad when it's in your own house and you walk to the back room, you're thinking, okay, I came back here for something. What was it? And uh, that's part of that growing old and wandering. Maybe that's why those were put back to back in that song because one happens and then the next one begins to happen. And, uh, but praise the Lord. I've got a mansion. I got a mansion. And, uh, I'm, I, you know, you know where I stand as far as the King James goes, I love the King James and how it's written. Some of the new translations, it says dwelling place. And, uh, I don't know about you, 
but I've seen some dwelling places and I'm not impressed with them at all, but they're dwelling places, but I've seen some mansions. When it gets that name mansion, there's something special about it. And I'm glad that my Bible says he's preparing us a mansion. And uh, I'm glad, I'm glad about that. I'm glad that the Lord is my savior. And uh, if he's your savior this evening, uh, we have a lot to be thankful for. Uh, anybody else need one of those little prayer cards? Uh, I know some of you, some, some more keeps coming in. I don't know, maybe we need to sing four or five more songs. Every time we sing a song, five or six more people come in. And uh, praise the Lord. We'll just keep singing. And uh, in the way of announcements, a reminder, Sunday uh, choir, as well as those involved in our drama, or the speaking parts for uh, our special Sunday as far as the Christmas program. There's a sign-up list. Uh, they're going to have a lunch. Please sign up uh, on the bulletin in the back for soup and uh, or sandwiches that you could bring, that you could share with the group. Okay, I like that word, share. And I hope you, hope you don't miss that. Bring enough for you and to share. And then Young at Heart, a reminder, the Living Christmas Tree. Uh, if you have not signed up yet and you're making plans to go December 11th, that is coming on us quickly. Be sure to do so. And then if you're interested in um, uh, sponsoring one of the poinsettias that you see up here, uh, uh, please sign the, the bulletin board. And uh, then there's some little envelopes there for you to drop your 1250 in and then uh, turn it in. Uh, in the offering to Mac. That will be a blessing. Thank you so much for those who have already done so. Uh, our program is on the 20th, December 20th. I'd encourage you to start inviting family. It is going to be a great day that morning in the house. Well, it's a great day every day in the house of the Lord, but it'll be a special day on that day and uh, be inviting some people. Yeah, if you've not signed up for your sandwich or uh, or soup and you're in the choir, see Brother Johnny, make sure you get signed up. Oh, offering. Time to take up the offering. I gotta be reminded. I'm 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 a bad pastor. And uh and uh every good pastor always remembers offering. I was ready to just move on. I'm gonna ask Brother Bobby if you would. <laughs> <laughs> if you would uh, ask the Lord's blessing on our offering and everything that's given to go toward our missions, uh, be faithful to do so. If you have your prayer list, let's go ahead and get those out. Our yellow, yellow prayer sheets. Does anybody have an update on anybody on our prayer sheet, you know, or prayer list? Kind of glance down through there and see. And uh, yes, Josh. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes.
Yes. He has a lot going on all at the same time and has. He's he's had a battle the last four or five years specifically, but yeah. Okay. Special prayer, especially for the Todd Daniels family. Um, he was the, or still is, he's still um, kind of, he's, a partial acting principal and had been a principal in the past at uh, Faith. Amen. 32 in uh, list number one. We can take him off. Surgery went well. Any other, any other updates? Yes, Josh, Joseph. I'm sorry. Yes, let's remember the Hughes family, Martha Hughes. Uh, this is Joe's aunt, um, had passed away on Tuesday night, real late. And uh, so let's, let's pray for them. A lot of the family are lost and uh, they're not doing a service, but they are doing a graveside uh, service tomorrow. So let's, let's pray for that family uh, through that loss. I think uh, Gordon's getting you a card there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Let's be sure to pray for Sheila Jones. She's the one uh, many of y'all remember. She had the little scooter that she put her knee on. She has severe arthritis. And the reason she had the first surgery was because her feet are, are curling up. So they actually broke the bones and straightened them. And uh, when it healed, now they're doing the other foot. So she is in the second foot now having that surgery done, which is very painful. And uh, so let's, let's pray for Miss Sheila Jones. Her and her husband come and sit somewhere about in front of where uh, Jeff and Joetta or snuggling on the pew there. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> take advantage of every opportunity. Amen. That's what I like about Brother Jeff. A any other any other prayer requests or updates there?
Gotcha. Let's uh, let's pray for Lexi Blankenship. Did you fill out a blue card? Gordon will get you one. Yeah, you need a stack. Next week we'll have uh, two prayer sheets. One one with uh, <laughs> one for Miss Pad and one for <laughs> no. Praise the Lord! I'm glad we could pray for these. And any other updates on the ones that are on our prayer sheet? Anybody have any other updates on the ones that are on our prayer sheet? Okay, uh, let me mention a few that did not make it because of space on our prayer sheet. We're just beginning to compile some of those, and I'll just read them uh, from week to week. Um, one is, this is from, let's do the ones from today. Um, we mentioned Todd Daniels, and uh, he's seeing a special doctor to see if and what they can do next to help with some of his treatment. And uh, Jordan um, Million, um, spiritual and physical. This is a uh, nephew to Mike and Anna Million. Then Melissa Steinfurth. Uh, tumor was found. Tumor was found on her liver. Uh, biopsy was today, and we're waiting the results. That is the sister to uh, Jeff Howard, and uh, then of course the family of Donna Shaw. Miss Shaw is uh, a former co-worker of Johnny and Tina, and uh, the Shaw family just lost their dad uh, just a few weeks ago and uh, Danny right before Thanksgiving and now Mrs. Shaw um, passed away today. So within about a week, there are some children that lost both their mother and father. Brother Johnny. Let's, let's remember this one and this family in our prayer. Um, let's remember DJ Crisco is having throat surgery um, next Tuesday, and it's possible throat cancer. His mother uh, died less than a month ago. So let's remember DJ Crisco. That is a co-worker of John Nance. And uh, it's another one on the show family. Okay, let's remember those in our prayers. Melissa, sister of Jeff and Joetta Howard. We've got that one. Okay, Chris Williams. Um, this is a prayer request by Leanne Adkins. Uh, was having heart surgery last week and has two children. As far as I know, that surgery has gone well, but recovering. And uh, then, of course, let's remember Miss Margaret. So the Davises come in. Miss um, Miss Margaret's still struggling from a reaction that she had to some medicine, and uh, it's taken her a, a good while to bounce back. So let's remember um, her in our prayers. Uh, I talked to Brother Chris Joyce. Uh, he requested a prayer last week for S.B. Falk. Um, this was his uncle, and he was at Bob Baptist Hospital on life support, and uh, he has no brain function at all, And uh, but the family is struggling with, you know, what to do as far as uh, turning the life support off. So pray for that family, especially with that decision as well. And then let's pray for Stephen Crawford family. 
Uh, mother passed away. Special prayer request by Miss um, Deborah McNeil. Let's remember also uh, the passing of Bonnie Lowman. And uh, this is part of the family of Brother Jeff Saunders, um, the aunt of Brother Jeff Saunders. So let's remember that family as well. Any others that we have failed? Yes. Fourteen year old um, had an accident with a firearm, and the family today made the decision to turn off life support because he was on life support as well. So let's remember that family in our prayers as well. Yes. Okay. Yes, let's remember the, the situation there in California. For those that are keeping track of the news there, there was another big shooting. And uh, let's, uh, let's pray for those families that are affected by that. Any others? Yes. December the 10th. He's the brother, brother uh, Donald Henson's third on our members' health needs. Um, has been moved up, was December 17th, has now been moved to December the 10th, and he's possibly going to need some surgery. Let's continue to remember Brother Danny Davis um, with his hearing, and uh, then, of course, Fred Brown, his health. Uh, Chris Joyce had his last shot in his knee today. And uh, so let's pray for him as he's at home. And uh, then, of course, Charles and Joyce Miller, health needs. Uh, Denise Sisson, uh, she actually has bronchitis along with all of her pneumonia. She had a breathing treatment at the ER last week. So let's continue to pray for her. Uh, Miss uh, Charlene Swaney, also the care of her mother um, there as well. WR, let's pray for him. And then Miss Wanda Wright and her health needs. Any, uh, any other prayer requests? If there's not, let's, let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and have our, uh, can I get a couple ushers to come help me? Ushers are passing out a, uh, a little card, the card you can keep. It's uh, the Fagales, number 11 on our, uh, on our mission list. And um, it's got some information there for you to hang on to and uh, put in a special place so that you can pray on a regular basis for our missionaries. And it's kind of like a quick glance at them. And uh, interesting facts, eight million people have access to the radio station in Baghdad and uh, Baghdad in Iraq uh, with 1 million people listening daily and uh, 96% of whom are non-Christian and uh, what an opportunity that they have there as they uh, they work in the Middle East and uh, so let's pray for them and of course that radio station as well and what the Lord is doing and has been doing. Uh, let's go to a time of prayer. Just before we do, I'm going to give some, some lists out. If the four here in the front, uh, from Brother Dallas forward, if you could pray for list number one in our health needs, list number two, if I could get um, those from Jeff and Joetta forward to pray for them, if I could get 
Um, those, I'm going to call them the back row Baptist. Um, that would include all the way across the back. That would be the Davises and the O'Neills. And uh, if you all could pray for our members list. And then those on our salvation list, I'm going to come down backwards and go from Mrs. Million back. Mrs. Million back, other than our back row. You're going to pray for our salvation list, our military, and uh, uh, other currently serving. Uh, we're going to have uh, from my wife forward to uh, Miss Lori. And uh, if you guys would pray, you four. Uh, if you would pray for our military list and then our college students and then we miss you um, all those remaining guests by way of internet and uh, those in the back uh, and those in the nursery if you have a prayer list and your babies are sleeping and you're going to pray uh, all the rest if you would pray for our college students as well as our we miss you that would be hannah haven michael Caleb, Cynthia, and Eric, all of our college students, and then the We Miss Yous, uh, and then those that are caregivers in those cases. So let's take a, mu um, a minute, a minute, pray for the section and the prayer list, read your mission letter, everybody's got a different mission letter, uh, read the mission letter from our missionaries, and uh, find a praise and a prayer request. You know, something to praise the Lord about and then something to pray for our missionary. And uh, as you look through those lists and then, of course, everyone is praying for the Fagales tonight as one of our special missionaries.
Oh, dear my Father, tonight as your people call upon your name, we are thankful. Thankful that we're able to bring our petitions straight before thee. Thankful that your thoughts toward us are that of peace. In the midst of a world where there's turmoil and tragedy, and Lord, even as tonight our minds are drawn toward California and a shooting or a family that has suffered loss here in Ashboro, whether it would be other or father, whether it would be a child uh, through uh, a tragic situation, whether it would be the health needs where the doctors don't know what to do, I do pray that your hand of mercy would be upon these situations. We ask nothing outside of your will to be done. We pray for strength for those that need strength and comfort for those that need comfort. Wisdom for those who need wisdom. Pray, Lord, that over the next few weeks as people are uh, overtaken with the lights and uh, the hustle and the movement and the shopping and things that are going on around them. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to take the opportunity to share the gospel with someone. Pray, Lord, as we leave, that we would take a track and we would pray over it and and uh, maybe be the first time that somebody would hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, realizing that it's not on the foreign field that the gospel is needed just as much here in Ashboro. I pray, Lord, that you would give us a burden for souls. Pray for those on our prayer list that, uh, Lord, need salvation. Lord, we pray that you'd provide that. You've already provided, but Lord, I pray that you would provide a means in which you'd help us to reach out and to share that gospel or send someone by that would share the gospel, that you would tender the heart. And Holy Spirit, you would continue to knock on that door. Lord, I also pray for our, our military, that your hand of protection would be about them those on foreign fields, those that are at home with the possibility of being called uh, to, to a foreign field. I pray, Lord, that you would meet their needs as well. Lord, we thank you. I pray that as we look into your word tonight, that you would help us to see things the way you see it. Help us to put, a, put aside worldly thought and uh, preferences but, Lord, I pray that your word would be powerful in our life and we would allow God's word to be powerful in our life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your missionary letter, if you'd pass it to the middle, our ushers will collect them back up. The little card with the Fagali's name on it, you keep that and uh, put it with the other 10 cards uh, that we have. And uh, I don't know if you want to decorate your refrigerator with them and pray for them each time you go, or if you've got a basket in your home, which you can pull one out each time you set. Uh, I don't know, maybe the basket you put your remote in for your TV so that before you turn on the TV every evening, maybe you pull one of them missionaries out and pray for them. If you have your Bible, turn to Hebrews chapter number 13. Hebrews chapter number 13. Hebrews chapter number 13. Thank you. There were five, five instructions toward the first part of Hebrews 13. Can anybody give me one? I'm going to put you on the spot. Anybody write them down? Anybody write any of them down? That's what we tell the young people. Write it down. If you write it down, you'll remember it. And, uh, you know, on, on Wednesday night, I want to encourage you, uh, don't float in and float out. I'm not saying that that's what you're doing. This is not a reprimand, but sometimes we don't think. And, and to be honest with you, 
that's what preachers are supposed to do anyways, be honest. And, uh, but I'm telling you the truth right now. Okay. I actually had to look for a minute and, uh, to say, okay, now what were the five? What were the five? And, uh, Josh, you know, one of the five, it let brother love continue. He's reading it now. He's smart. He's smart and he looks and, uh, let brother love. There's, there's five of them. Go ahead. It'd be not forgetful. That wasn't one of them. And uh, but it does say remember in there, but that wasn't the one of the five that we strangers being hospitable, being hospitable. And uh, don't forget to be hospitable. And then, of course, um, brotherly love. And uh, don't forget to entertain strangers unaware. And uh, it's hospitable. Uh, don't forget where we came from. Remember, be compassionate and uh, toward, toward those that are in bondage. Uh, because at one time or another, we were all under the bonds of sin. Uh, remember the holiness of marriage and that marriage is honorable. And then there in verse 5, let your conversation um, be without covetousness. Remember, don't be covetous. Don't covet after. Why? Because Jesus is all we need. And uh, we come to the point where we think we need more than Jesus. Then, then we need to be careful what grounds we're stepping on. And uh, I say that in review, okay, review. Because if you look at the next verses that take place, the next verses simply are a reminder of the first five. Uh, verse number six says this, so that, why is the so that showing up? So that is showing up because the first five, you know, as far as brotherly love, as far as uh, entertaining strangers, as far as uh, marriage being honorable, remembering that we were all under bonds and that not one of us is more important than another. And uh, then, of course, uh, let your conversation be without covetousness, being careful of that covetousness. And uh, it says, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. This kind of goes back and forth. If you're going to be in a place where your conversation is not that of being covetous, it's going to be because the Lord is your maker and the Lord is your helper. And uh, that shows up there in verse six. If you're going to be able to be in a place where, where you're, Love for the brother continues. It's going to be because of verse number six, where it says the Lord is your helper. And uh, we can boldly say the Lord is our helper when he has what? This is like elementary school. If the Lord has helped you, then you can go back and say the Lord is my helper. But if you've not come to the place where you're, you're serving the Lord in such a way that he has helped you, then you can't say that he's my helper. If you haven't let that brotherly love continue, if you haven't been in that place where, where your conversation has been covetous, if, if you have been living the first five verses of Hebrews, then you can say in verse uh, number six, as the writer here has said, so that we may, and I like the word boldly, you know, we ought to be bold for Christ. We ought to be able to be bold and say, you know, I, I, I love the Lord and, and uh, he's my savior. And, and uh, even if people look at, sometimes people look at you like you're crazy. We were down in Florida, or not Florida, Tennessee, with the youth. And we had those shirts on, you know, the ones we had made that said, so in real big letters. And uh, then, of course, it had uh, looked like a cross, but said, uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say, and then had the big letters so on. There was a couple people that we passed, kind of looked at it, and uh, there's one of them just kind of, you know, kind of rolled their eyes and made a little comment. And, but I'm glad that we can be bold about our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, that he's our Savior during this time of year. I, I, it bothers me, but in some ways I'm kind of thankful when somebody says, Happy Holidays. And I get to look back at them and say, Merry Christmas to you too. And I smile real big because I want them to know that I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God, and I'm proud of what my Savior has done. 
and he is my savior. I can say boldly, he is my helper because he's helped me. He's helped me. And there's no way that you're going to be able to do the first five verses. Let me tell you, it is, it is difficult to let brotherly love continue when your brother is imperfect. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's a good point. And we go around the room. We can mention everybody's name. Some of them you'd be like, yeah, amen. I know he's not perfect. And uh, amen. I know he's not perfect. And uh, you realize that we all are sinners saved by grace. And that we're, that, that for some reason we get to a place sometimes where we start looking at other people like, oh, they're sinners. Well, so are you. Um, now, we should not continue in sin. Romans tells us this. It says, uh, God forbid. Shall we continue in sin? He says, no, God forbid. We ought not to continue in it but we should realize that, that we all have our sins. Some of us have our sins hid in the closet where not a lot of people get to see them. And then some people's sins get thrown right out in front of everybody, like when you speed and they put your name in the newspaper and, uh, or you don't wear your seatbelt and they put your name in the newspaper. And then people call you, I saw your name in the newspaper. God forbid, I'm a sinner. And uh, I'm trying not to sin as often as I used to. And uh, amen. It's been a long time since you've seen me down at the courthouse, and uh, praise the Lord for that, too. And uh, that's because I've been wearing my seatbelt, and uh, that's because my the, the van goes beep, beep, beep if you don't wear it. And uh, praise the Lord. But here it is. You can't. You can't. If you try to do it on your own, it will not take place. But I'll tell you, when the Lord is your helper, this, is, this, is, this isn't what Pastor Troy thinks. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says, so that we may boldly say, what are we going to say? That the Lord is my helper. Secondly, he says, I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The fear of man, the Bible says, bringeth a snare. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In this passage of Scripture, when it says, I will not fear what man can do unto me. You know who I think of? I think it's very sobering when we think about what has gone on in the Middle East with the Christians. And the fact that some of those Christians have stood for the Lord and have lost their life, been beheaded because of what? Because their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I wonder, would I be able, without fear, to boldly stand for the Lord? There's only one way. That's if the Lord's been my helper. He said, I'll not fear. Sometimes we get in a place where we allow fear to cause us to do things that we would not have normally done. And I've mentioned this before. There's some things I've done because I was afraid of what my children would say about their dad. I've got on some roller coasters because my children have, have said, oh, dad, you're a chicken. And I'm like, I don't want my kids thinking I'm a chicken. And I got on there because I was afraid of what my children would say. I'm over that now, by the way. I'm not afraid of what my children say. I'm done with roller coasters. I'm done with jumping off platforms and bungee jumping and the whole nine yards. I'm, done. I'm over the fear of my children. I care less what they think now. You know what? We need to get to the place for our Lord that we're not afraid what man's going to say. We're going to stand up for the Lord boldly, boldly. It says, if, if these are happening in my life, it is a result of the Lord being my helper. And I can boldly, they join together. Do you realize that these two join together? You don't have one without the other. If the Lord's your helper, then you don't fear man. If the Lord's your helper, you don't feel there. It says this and this. It, it doesn't say this or this, does it? It doesn't say the Lord's my helper or, uh, you know, I, I stand before man unafraid that, that, that I can, that I'm not afraid of what man can do unto me. No, these are joined together as a result of verses one through five. 
And then it continues on by reminding us of something. It says, remember them which have the rule over you. And it doesn't stop there. There's a comma in, the, in, this, in this little word, who have spoken unto you the word of God. It's not just saying, remember those that have the rule over you, but the ones that have the rule over you that has spoken unto you the word of God. You know, there's a difference. There's people that can have the rule over you, but they don't speak the word of God. You may have a boss that's unsaved. This is referring to those that have spoken the word of God to these people. Now, remember, this is, this is found on... The night after what? what? What happened in the chapter before? Y'all remember uh, chapter uh, verse tw- or chapter 12, chapter 11? What's chapter 11 and verse 12 all about? The What, the heroes of the faith? It mentions the heroes of the faith, and then we're reminded to look into Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. So here after he shared this great line and heritage of of godly men and godly women and women of faith and men of faith, we find ourselves at this this list that says, okay, let let Brother Love continue. As I'm closing out this, this book of Hebrews, we have all of this, and then we come to this place where I'm telling you, okay, there's some things I want you to remember now. As you're as you have this boldness, because he's your helper. Remember those that have the rule over you, that that spoke the word of God to you, and then it, then it then it has the little colon there, and it says, "Whose faith follow?" So it's saying, if you're going to follow an example. Here is the example of the ones I want you to follow. And then he adds this on the end. He says, consider the end of their conversation. Now, remember, in Scripture, conversation does not always uh, speak about what we speak, but it speaks of a lifestyle or habits. It's saying, look, your conversation, your activities, what you speak with your body, our, 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 our actions, which speak louder than words, our actions, our conversation. He says, consider them. Some of these people were known personally by some of these believers that were reading this passage in Hebrews as it was written as a letter underneath the Holy Spirit's inspiration to those that those in that church at that day. And it says this, follow whose faith follow. I like that it said their faith. It doesn't say follow their personalities. It doesn't say follow Uh, the area in which they were in. It says, follow their faith. You realize not everything about leaders we can follow. There's some things that, that I pray my children do not follow in my footsteps. And uh, some things they've already begun to follow in my footsteps and uh, they'll do things at the house and my wife will look at me. And I'm like, why are you looking at me? They're the one who did it. And she's looking at me saying, yeah, but you're the one who taught them. You know, they learned that from you. Uh, They learned how to pick and and, uh, be in irritation at times. Uh, Or they say something inappropriate at the wrong moment. And it's something that I had said or something that I had done. And uh, then my wife, instead of looking at them, will look at me because they learned something from me. I'm glad that here in this passage of Scripture, it doesn't say learn everything about that. And it says learn their faith. Watch their faith. Watch where their strength is concerning this faith. Let us remember that there's a faith that we ought to follow. And uh, it says this about verse number 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. 
Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today. I like that word forever. You know why? Because Jesus Christ is the same for us today as he was back then. I can't get over this next year. I'm, I've already let the cat out of the bag. Uh, the theme for 2016 for Eastside Baptist Church is getting into the timeless word, digging into the timeless word of God. Getting in it. Why? Because it's the same for us today as it was to that generation. How do I know that? Psalm chapter 100, that verse number 6, where it talks about his mercies are everlasting and his truth endureth to what? All generations. All generations. That means his truth back then is still his truth today. The same Jesus was then is the same Jesus we have today. And for some reason, we think he has less power because he's not parting the waters. And I think maybe it's because we have less faith because we've not followed the faith. Follow the faith. Follow the faith of those who have what? Who have shared the word of God. Right here. When we follow the faith of those who have shared the word of God, it goes right back to brotherly love continuing because Jesus will be our helper. Why? Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And just as the examples in the word of God of those who had great faith overcame and were had brotherly love continuing, and they were able to be hospitable, and they were able uh, to live their life without having the conversation of being covetous, those that, that realized that marriage was honorable in all things, we can find that same helper today. Reminds me of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 as we close. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And then we can go back to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He can be your helper too. Why don't we choose to allow him to be our helper? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the strength that we gain from your word. I pray, Lord, that you would truly be our helper. Oh, there's an evidence when you're our helper. We have boldness. And we're not afraid of what man can do. Oh, Lord, I pray that it be evident in our life, the lives of our children, that we would set forth the faith that can be followed, the faith based on one that would have authority, the authority of the Word of God. Oh, I pray that you would help us to always hold close to your word and make it be a part of our life so that you can be our strength and our helper that we'll have that boldness that only you can give. Oh, help us to remember and have confidence because there are some that have gone before us with great faith. Help us to follow the faith. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you for your kind attention. You're dismissed.